you are going to love today's episode with my friend, Cheryl Burgett. I met her nine years ago when I went to get certified to become a passion test facilitator, which is the process that you know by now has radically transformed my life and the lives of hundreds of my clients. And it continues to do so to this day. Now, we'll talk about that a little bit, but we'll talk about so much more. Cheryl is an incredible force in this world, and I can't wait for you to meet her. So let's go. Hi, I'm Tamara Zoner. Welcome to Spirit Cafe. Come in, sit down, and grab a cup of love. Hello, Cheryl. Welcome to Spirit Cafe. I'm so excited you're here. Hey, Tamara, I'm excited to be here. What a way to start out the week. Oh, wonderful. There's no reason not to love Mondays when when you get to have awesome conversations with cool people. (laughs) Absolutely. Perfect. So why don't we start with you just giving us the snapshot Cheryl story? Who are you? And then what do you do? And how did you get to be you? Wow, that's a long journey. How long do you have? Well, uh, a little bit about who I am. So uh, I spent, I left, this is, I always tell the story about how when I went through school, I never thought I had an option to go to college. I it was always talked about. It was, I think I was a little naive. Mm. So I go to college and somebody doesn't come back after the semester, first semester. And I'm like, where'd they go? They dropped out. You can drop out. I mean, that's literally kind of <laughs> how naive I was. Oh, oh, I didn't think it was an option. So my parents raised me in that I was just on this path. Uh, my mom was actually a genius. She had an IQ of 168. Holy smokes. And when she had children, she stayed home to raise children. So I think she wanted us to be smarter than we were. But anyway, <laughs> she got what she got. And I, uh, so as I, you know, as I, as I got done with college, I was like, what, what do I want to do? So I moved to Colorado. Um, I found myself in, cause I always felt like I had to climb that corporate ladder. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I found myself in a very lucrative industry, the financial services industry, and I climbed my way up uh, and I found myself in sales, outside sales, uh, with a 10 state territory, traveling all the time. Um, I I think at one point I sold about $168 million in investment services. So I was very um, personal and relational with people. uh, And that's the part I loved. What I didn't love was all the other things that happened (laughs) when people started to lose money in the market and things happened. And there was a point in my life where I was like, there's got to be more. So I kind of went on this search for what, what was my true purpose for being here? And I, through multiple um, uh, things that came to me, I found uh, something, Tamara, and how I met you is the passion test. Um, by Jen and Chris Atwood. And I I went to on a quest to find my passion, which I feel like leads you to your purpose. It really, when you identify what matters to you uh, and you start to think about what are the things that are most important. So one of the things that was most important was inspiring others to find their own greatness and empowering them to live it. Well, I, I got to start that by myself too, for myself. And long story short, I... Um, I found that I wanted to help other people. I wanted to spread the word about finding your passion, but I also wanted to teach people who wanted to make this a business how to earn revenue or fill rooms or sales has always become really natural to me. And now I'm doing it for a good purpose. So sales with a purpose, I think is really um, what I'm all about. Sales with a purpose is so beautiful. And, you know, I think you were integral in teaching like how to teach from love, like sell with love. Right. And that was when I first started out doing my own business with the passion test and coaching, it was very hard for me to offer until I fully believed in what I was doing and, Mm -hmm. and felt the, the changes within, within my own life. 
And I was able to say, look, I wasn't selling anything at that point. I was just expressing my own experience. And then people said, I want some of that too. <laughs> exactly what happened. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have an acronym for sales I want to share um, with your listeners and with you, which I was sitting on a phone call one day and people were talking kind of anti-sales. Like we got to stay away from the word sell because people don't like that. And I thought, well... It is what it is, right? Even if people don't like it or love it. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to share was that, and I was sitting there and a download happened and it was sales means serving anyone lovingly, effectively, and successfully. Oh, I love so that. one of the funniest things is I'm in a book called the Itty Bitty um, Book of Small, B- Book of Words. Itty Bitty Book of Words. And the book is this thick. <laughs> and I got the word sales. <laughs> and the acronym is serving anyone lovingly, effectively, and successfully, because that's what I believe. Mm-hmm. It's about serving other people, not selling to them or, right. you know, um, obviously we all are paid for our gifts, right? And we need that in order to um, get exposure to more people, help more people. It's a bigger impact and it is um, a value, you know, teaching yes. people how to sell, teaching people how to um, solve people's problems. I know that if I teach somebody to do that, they'll never go broke. Yeah. They'll never go broke. And so they have a way to sustain their gift and get paid for it. I love that. And it's so important, especially, you know, with the audience that Spirit Cafe has, it's a whole bunch of spiritual people. And often, and we've covered this on the podcast, people think, spiritual people think that making money goes against spirituality. That I know it's so <laughs> frustrating. So I love the Joel Osteens of the world who say, "No, we are meant to prosper," and that's the truth. And the and the more you prosper, the more people you can help. And you know, that's it. change change money just makes life easier. It doesn't yeah. change who you are, and it allows you to reach more people. That's mm-hmm. it. Yeah. So. That's one of the reasons I love money because I love to be able to give it away and I can only give it away when I have more than enough. Right. Right. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. It's okay so, to love money. You can't hate something. That was it. Actually, that was an exercise we did in the uh, facilitator training when you guys had us sit down and for one full minute, you know, write our thoughts about money and all my words were negative. And I'd realized that I'd grown up with all the negative money messages of money doesn't grow on trees. You know, my dad thinks rich people are evil, you know, <laughs> and I <laughs> sat there and I thought, well, gosh, it's no wonder I don't have any. <laughs> it's no wonder I don't have any. So you gotta love it. You can't hate it and want it to come to you. You got to love it and want it to come to you. So the root of all evil is the love of money, right? Like in a bad way, right? But money for good is is, you know, our, our capital. It's our, it's how we do things in this country or in many. Yeah, we need it. We need it to live. We need it to eat. We need it. We need it to be able to serve others. We need it to educate our children. We need it for everything. I need it to get Mm -hmm. to my mom's house. I need a car, right? I have to pay for that. (laughs) Right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So what are you doing now? I see a book on the shelf behind you. Um, you've been in the itty bitty word book. So what do you, so now we know a little bit about who you are. You're this beautiful woman, this inspiring force in the world who loves to teach people that sales is, is actually spiritual in many senses. And, and it is a service. I read, I realized that before I ask you this next question, um, as I was doing, a masterclass a few years ago, it finally fully clicked because I realized that if I didn't make an offer for them to work with me one-on-one or in a group uh, capacity at the end of my class, then I was actually of disservice because I didn't give them a way to fully integrate the little bit that they learned in an hour with me. So that's absolutely right. Transformation doesn't happen in an hour or three days. Transformation happens over time. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And so you are at a, I'm so glad to hear that. That just makes me so happy. 
It really helped me switch. And now I get to help others. You know, I'm in groups with entrepreneurial women who do classes and coaching and wellness and all this stuff. And I can say now this, this is actually easy for me now, because I know that if I'm not offering them, I'm selling them short and I'm actually not being of service. So the, the gift in the sales part is to make the offer that then can support them in lasting transformation. And baby steps, right? It's all, it happens in baby steps. We don't take a giant leap in three months or a minute or three hours. We make a giant leap over time built on thousands of baby steps. Absolutely. You are, you're so right on when we talk about the, we create new habits, right? The habits I had 10 years ago, not the habits I have today. Right. So as we evolve, as we choose to evolve and um, become better at what we are, or we serve in bigger ways, or we serve in different ways, um, it's so important to create those habits and actually live those um, those tools, live the things that are happening, and use the tools as you've said. Mm-hmm. That's what you're. That's what you are an expert in is living the tools and sharing the other to with other people the tools that have helped you change your life. Yes. Um, and, and, and led you to where you are today, which is so exciting. It is exciting. <laughs> it is exciting. So where are you today? What are you doing in the world today? How are you showing up in the world? And tell us about that book in the background too. Yes. Yeah, so I show up in the world with generally pink glasses. Um, they're my favorite. I like to be a little fun. Uh, I just got back um, into Denver after two years on the road. Oh, wow. Um, in traveling. Right. And uh, it was before COVID, we had the idea and we've had the idea for 10 years to um, just travel to different cities. Um, My partner's a golf pro. So we wanted to be in warm places during the winter. And after two years, we decided that we wanted to to put some roots down again and be in Colorado. So what I do is I'm I'm a business coach and a sales strategist who helps people learn how to get more clients, make more money and have a bigger impact. And the reason that that's so important is that people have gifts that are um, shared with few and need to be shared with more. And so helping them to come up with a plan uh, is really kind of where we start. You know, what there's this, I have a system that I use and that I'll knock on wood. I'm six years plus in business. I'm in my seventh year. And 100% of the people that have followed the, the system have more than doubled what they, more than doubled what they were making at wow. least on at a minimum. So, uh, and I'm proud to say that, that 100%. So I know the system works, you know, can I trans, transfer the system? And I work with all kinds of people. I work with healers. I work with wellness professionals, which I find are um uh it, it, th- those are a little more tricky because in trying to articulate how do you help people right what is the problem you solve and nailing that down because people have such a variety of things that they they talk about it really is um lost in translation so meaning that the more you say the less people hear so being concise and saying, I help these people solve this problem with this result is, is really how you have to narrow it down in order for people to help. So I work with people generally uh, at a minimum, I, I, I do a VIP day where I give them a strategic profit plan, which is, is, is really kind of the first steps, which, you know, how do you get your leads? How do you talk to them? How do you follow up? And how do you close sales? Um and overcome objections. It's kind of five pillars. And it sounds traditional, but I personally, I've personally never taken a a sales class in my entire life. Um, I know it sounds weird. (laughs) Thinking back to how you were selling like millions of dollars of of financial Mm -hmm. services going, you never took a sales. I had a weekend. I had a weekend where they brought somebody in one weekend and the entire time I was in the sales business. And, and it was in Cape Cod. I never saw Cape Cod. Because we were seven, seven in the morning till midnight. And then we had, pre, you know, presentations the next day we had to prepare for. I'm like, when would that happen? Um, I used to go, this is not logical. <laughs> so I wanted my sales to be logical <laughs> and really from the heart, you know, yeah. really connecting with people, you know, find out what someone needs, find out someone what someone needs and if you can help them. 
Um, so people who try to sell me things they've never even asked me if I need um, is a real indicator to me that um, they're in an old old mindset. Mm-hmm. That's not how we do it today. You know, yeah. you you really have got to care about the other person and have that conversation and find out what they need and what they're missing and what their problem is and what their hole is, right? Mm-hmm. And what do they want, right? So you help them to get clear on what they want. So I was clear that I no longer wanted to work in the financial industry and that I wanted to change lives and uh, way presented itself. And I left in 2007 and I've never looked back. So there you go. <laughs> That's it in a nutshell. That's a good nutshell. That's amazing. And okay. So you've been, uh, so you're doing your business is basically virtual. If you've been doing it on the road with your golf pro partner, mm-hmm. <laughs> pretty yes. and you had some kind of souped up uh, RV, right? Yeah. We had um, a 36 foot, you know, all inclusive drive it, park it, sleep. That, oh, the, okay. That's what I wanted. And we towed a car. So um, we, yeah, it was, an, it was interesting and difficult during COVID, I'll just say, um, and learned a lot of things and got to see a lot of part of the country I've never seen. So I knew that I, you know, do you say yes to something and step forward and then go fully in, which, which I did. Um, and then realized that I'm not so handy and lots of things can rattle loose when you're driving down the road and have to know how to fix it. Okay. So, um, anyway, I'm laughing about that, but yeah, my, I'm a hundred percent virtual. So, um, I do have clients here in Colorado and I have clients in, you know, all over the country. So, um, yeah, I've been virtual since prior to, uh, everybody else going virtual. So we're ahead of the game. Um, <laughs> yeah. 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 This is something you don't have to teach. I love Zoom. Uh, I don't uh, I don't do phone calls. I prefer to do Zoom because you can read um, you can read people and there's a lot more said than not said in over a phone call. <laughs> so. I totally agree. You know, anytime anyone asks me for a phone call nowadays, there's only one client I'll work with over the phone because she doesn't have good internet. Mm-hmm. And everyone else, I'm like, no, I want to be able to see your face. I want to be able to see your body language. I want to see your expression change when you're hitting resistance. <laughs> <laughs> or when you get a light bulb moment, because those often aren't audible. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And you can tell if somebody's talking to you and they've got their arms crossed and they're sitting back in their chair and they're, you know, not engaged and not listening and, you know, okay, what's wrong? <laughs> you can, you can really kind of probe them and poke to see um, how things are landing. So yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Yeah. It's good totally to see agree. Okay. I'm, I want to go back to this big, long okay. two years on the road because I believe that life is always teaching us, always Mm -hmm. teaching us. And I feel like two years on the road had some pretty big life lessons. So I'm wondering if you'd kind of dig in to your experience and share what is the biggest learning that you experienced in those two years on the road? Uh, I would say um, perseverance, perseverance. Um, you have made a decision. You are in it. There's no, there's no turning back. There's no going home to mom. There's no, there's none of that. So perseverance in moving forward. Um, and, and it really can be a daily decision, but not really, you know, I'm in it. I know it's going to be for a, a certain amount of time. Um, I, we didn't know it was going to be, we, originally we said 12 months and it ended up being two years, 24 and coming back to Colorado and saying, this is where I want to stay. But the, the biggest thing is perseverance and um, knowing that there's a solution to everything. Mm-hmm. There's always a solution. And I think it, what's interesting is entrepreneurs, the biggest, um, if you see people who are successful, one of the things they're great at is problem solving. Right. So, t- you know, learning to solve problems on, on things that you <laughs> never even thought of Um you know, when the cabinets fall down at the front of the, the rig and you have to leave the next day and there's nobody to come to repair it, huh? How do you fix that? Oh, not handy, but tie downs. So you just go buy some tie downs and you hook up and you just, you know, the 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 entire cabinet system so that you can leave. Uh, <laughs> you, a bucket flies off. This is the first, this is the first day. 
a bucket flies off on the highway, a paint bucket from a truck in front of you. It gets stuck under your motorhome. You, you're, you're driving, dragging this thing. And you're like, uh, and you pull over. And all I can remember saying, get me the tongs as I'm laying under there, not my arms on my long enough to reach it so that we can pull. I, it was one thing after another. And, you know, after the second day, I was like, what have I done? And realized that it taught me a lot about relationships. It taught me a lot about how do you confine yourself in a 36 foot, you know, um, uh, con- uh, area for two years and not kill each other, right? Really. Right. And it's, um, we definitely learned how to, what each other needed and um, how to work around that. You know, a day at Panera's really cures a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Going to Panera. So perseverance around um, at really everything in life. Perseverance around uh, you're living in different surroundings. Um, knowing what you like. Boy, does it get clear what you like and what you don't like. Right? And, you know, I picked Colorado 30 ugh, something years ago. We won't even say. Uh, maybe 35, 36 years ago. And there's a reason that I picked Colorado it being all across the country. Um, it's other than the snow that's coming tonight. <laughs> it's a great place to live. <laughs> uh, and it's, it taught me perseverance about relationships and about situations and just how do we, what's the next step, right? What's the next step? What's the next step when you get a $192,000 um, cell phone bill? <laughs> I'm not <laughs> kidding you. Not kidding. 192,000. Mm-hmm. And uh, they had sold us, uh, we added a line and we wanted internet and they gave us GPS. So the, you know, we used it five minutes and then it kept racking up. And the guy says, um, well, you do owe the money. And I said, uh, no, we don't. No, we don't owe $192,000 on a phone bill. Right. And it took, let's just say it took like three or four months to be persistent and get it taken care of. And I've learned persistence, um, is really, you know, you are your own best advocate in every situation. And um, I'm nice. And, you know, I'm kind and dealing with other people until I'm not. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And the reality is sometimes other people don't always have your best interest in heart at heart, and you have to take care of you. And I remember saying to a woman at an RV repair shop, you know, I've been kind. Would you agree that I've been kind in asking for the information that I needed? And she said, yes. And I said, great, because um, it's three o'clock on a Friday. I've been asking for two weeks. And if I don't get an answer by five o'clock Friday, you'll hear from my attorney on Monday. Now that kind of persistence is not what I like to pull out. Right. But it's a persistence that got me an answer by five o'clock that day that they had double charged us $1,250. They double charged us for the parts. I'm like, something's not right here. And I just knew. And um, a lot of people, because they travel, would have gone on and not said anything. And so um, perseverance in taking care of ourselves, um, perseverance in taking care of my clients. Mm -hmm. I really focused on not having anything disrupt the type of service that I gave my clients when I was on the road. I didn't want anything to interfere with that. Their lives couldn't change because I made a decision to travel, mm-hmm. right? So that was my number one priority is serving my clients at that time. That's pretty amazing. And I love the way that you described that story at the shop because <laughs> you said, I'm kind until I'm not. But what what happens actually is that you're being kind to others until the point where it would require you to be unkind to yourself. That's a great observation. Right? Yeah. So and that's that's radical self-care right there. That is, I will not back down because then I, I'm being unkind to myself, my integrity, my beliefs, what I believe is right. And so a lot of us which is, oh well, never mind. Oh, it's no big deal. I mean, even to bring out the mustard in the restaurant, oh, they didn't bring it. Oh well, never mind. No, then we're unkind to ourselves because we get to stand up for what we want, what we desire, what we believe. And that's true strength. That's pretty admirable. That's incredible, Cheryl. That's impressive. Well, I 
I like the way you pulled that all together because you're right. It would have been being unkind. And, you know, it, it, it took, um, you know, a, 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 I was willing to do whatever it took to get the answer because I knew I felt intuitively, trust your gut, right? Yeah. I knew something was not right. And, and uh, so just staying persistent, talking to her and saying, okay, I said, you <laughs> I won't tell you what else I said. No, I'll, I'll be, I'll, be real. I'll tell you what else I said. I said, if I don't get an answer by five o'clock, I said, you live in a small town and I have a big mouth. You live in a small town and I have a big mouth. And I don't think you want to have this reputation of not getting back. And boy, that got, that got a fire lit and come to find out exactly what I thought happened was wrong. You know, why is the, why are there two parts exactly the same price? And our, our our warranty company, um, it was just the difference. Mm -hmm. So, and they tried to give me other explanations as to why that is. And I said, nope, <laughs> nope, not buying it. So, um, so got it all worked out. And, you know, I'm happy that I stayed with it because otherwise they would have um, about $1,200 and $1,300 of my money that, um, you know, wasn't, wasn't theirs. Right. So there you go. Yeah, yeah. And that matters. That amount matters. That's a, you know, that's a lot of money. Yeah. You know, when we came back, I think part of the reason I decided I wanted to stay in Colorado is we started and it was two ninety nine in Florida. As we started to drive across the country, it started, the price started rising mm -hmm. and we ended up at, you know, $4 a gallon by the time we got to Arizona. And I was like, you know, that just, um, increased our, you know, increased our obvious increased our costs a lot, but you know, they're coming back down and, and, you know, people are still traveling and yeah. now we rent it. So oh, um, cool. we rent it out of Arizona. Yeah. Oh, and uh, cool. it's just a, a, you know, we, it's, it's really fun um, for a short amount of time. <laughs> yeah. That's a long time to, I, to be stuck in close quarters. I mean, I think that a lot of people learn through COVID even stuck in a home that is of decent size, when you're <clears throat> always on top of one another, you're either going to notice how much you love about each other <laughs> and be really grateful that you're with that person stuck mm -hmm. in this situation, or you're going to notice all the things that you're not willing to tolerate anymore. And I think a lot of relationships went through this upheaval of, is it worth it? Do I actually want to be stuck on an island with this person? Am I worth walking away? I think I might be. Are they worth working for? I think they might be. So lots of people came to different conclusions and all the evidence was laid out before us while we're stuck in these, you know, tiny boxes, regardless of the size. Life can feel like a tiny box sometimes. That was a good part. We realized yeah. we could live together in those close quarters for two years and walk out still talking to each other, still loving each other, still liking each other. Yeah, that's, that's big. That's that huge. big. One time when I was in the early days of dating Mike, that uh, if you travel well together, like that, that is a good indicator for a long, good relationship. And I thought, well, that's cool because Mike and I travel great together. That's it's the best. We have so much fun together. We can be in a car for hours and hours and hours. Literally, we did a driving trip a couple of months ago where we drove the UP for like eight hours wow. a day and it was fun and easy and perfect and we it's great so if you can be in a tiny box with a person and still love them or love them even more at the end of it then that that's a good sign yeah and it was a the good news is it was a joint conclusion that we should lay down roots and stay and and it was good because I think there was a lot of things that we didn't, I I, I tried to anticipate, mm -hmm. um, but that you don't always anticipate. And, um, and so I think that you have to continually be up for the next, you know, problem that's going to happen, but also celebrate. I mean, some of the greatest things we did were we swam with the manatees um, down in, uh, I think it was clear, Grand, Clearwater, Florida. No, not Clearwater. It was somewhere in Florida on the, on the West coast, but only place in the world you can do that. Wow. You know, I had a manatee come up and take a breath right in front of me. Oh, how cool. That's an unforgettable experience. And it was really amazing and fun. 
And um, so I'm really glad that, you know, there were things that I would never have done. Niagara Falls, I'd never seen Niagara Falls. Now you live close. Yeah. Uh, so I'm gone. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. um, but I had never seen Niagara Falls. Wow. So there were some really great um, things that I got to see in the country and still would love to just not permanently <laughs> shorter trips, <laughs> shorter, trips. Shorter, trips. shorter trips. So, um, you know, I love the, my greatest, uh, I just want to share this because I think it's important. My greatest, um, thrill uh, in my business particularly is when my clients have success, when they call me and they tell me they landed that new client, or they called me and said, you know, I realized in a moment that uh, I, I needed to say something different mm-hmm. so that they could understand the value of what I provided because they didn't even get it. They didn't see the problem or the hole or the gap that they had. Mm-hmm. And I was able to service them. And then this happened. So I took care of what they needed. Um, I had a, a client at the beginning of this year say, uh, after working with me for a year, she called and said, oh, by the way, I landed a $175,000 contract. And I'm like, wow. And she said, and I think it could have had to do with how you told me to present a proposal. Like, don't just send it. And I go, yeah, could have could have been something like that. And <laughs> um, so just that tiny little addition of changing something someone does drastically increases their their chance or percentage of getting the business, right? Mm-hmm. Don't just send a proposal, present it in person or present it on Zoom at the time they get it. Because what happens is people's minds go everywhere. Oh, that seems expensive for that or that, da, da, da. And you can go through it and explain what's what. And yeah, she was pretty excited. Um, I have yeah, to say. that's amazing. Made her year. <laughs> right? Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah. tell us about the book since we're on work. Tell us about okay. Business Boosts. All right. Business Boosts is a compilation book with um, some of the top um, business entrepreneurs that I have been with for the last six years. Uh, and um, we all basically wrote about what do we want the world to know? What's what's our point of view, right? What's our point of view? What do I, what do I want the world to know? So mine is um, closed-mindedness blinds you to all opportunities, meaning all opportunities. Oh, wow. So if we think things only happen one way, or we think that, it can only happen one way, then we close ourselves off to all the other, other ways that things can happen. Mm -hmm. So I basically tell people, you know, what are the steps you take in order to start to be more aware, more conscious of what's going on around you so that you don't miss opportunities. I like that. It's like that. This is something better at the end of your passion test list, right? Stay open to possibility and to success showing up differently than you expected. Absolutely. I couldn't have, I could not have predicted how things would be going today, 10 years ago, right? I'm a different person. I'm a different, you know, we evolve at at least. My hope is that people evolve as the world changes. The world is not the same as it was a year ago. Mm -mm. And so as we come into 2023, we look at what are the things we're going to have to do differently? I am preparing my clients. I have a, I have an intensive coming up in December where I, at the beginning, where we plan for 2023, we plan for the first quarter, we plan by quarter, by year. And then we adjust as we go because, you know, the world is changing so fast. Mm-hmm. And so we need to, I always tell my clients when COVID hit, all right, I, d- I did a 6 a.m. call with them every Monday through Friday, 6 a.m., got on the phone because they had a choice. They were either going to take this as a vacation, (laughs) which I didn't want my clients to do. And I said, no, if you do that, you will lose your business. And Mm -hmm. sure enough, people who took it as a vacation no longer are in business. So my clients actually had the best years they'd ever had because they, they, we connected every morning at 6am, 15 minutes. What are you going to do? What are you going to, how are you going to do today? How are you doing today? (laughs) That was another one. And, um, Yeah, we did it through the entire time of COVID and it really made a difference. Keep moving forward. And I love that you asked that, not just what are you doing today, but how are you doing today? Because mindset is so much of business, 
right? So much of business. And if we're not taking care of that mind and all the sabotage that can go on when life feels hard or or gas prices shoot up or, you know, the world goes crazy because it does every three minutes, <laughs> if we're not checking in with that mindset and knowing our own patterns, that's one thing I've noticed for myself is before I have a big event or a big launch, I'll just start like going spiraling down. But now I'm in this process long enough to catch myself mid spiral and go, uh, 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 <laughs> get right. back to work, do the work, do the mindset work and get right back up there and know that you're here for a reason and that what you have to give is of service. So just keep yourself up here, you know, and don't let that spiral continue. And so it's so important to have somebody like you and somebody like me to catch people when their mindset is not where it needs to be for, uh, you know, creating a, a beautiful life, a life we love, a successful business, a successful relationship, a successful experience. I agree a hundred percent. You have to take care of yourself. You have to use the tools and it doesn't happen overnight. We've been working. I, I've known you for a long time. We've yeah. been working at this for years and um, using the tools that we know to keep ourselves one step ahead so that we can serve others, so that we can serve the people who haven't quite made that a habit or serve the people who haven't quite figured out, oh, I'm in mid spiral. Let's stop here. You know, <laughs> right. I tell and people, they go all the way to the bottom before they <laughs> I tell people don't wait because every time you try to make a sale and you don't, you're losing confidence. Mm -hmm. And so I'd rather catch you here than down there, right? And have to pull you back up. So um super important to um know that there are a lot of reasons that sales don't close or that you don't get the business, and it has to do with how do you um, how do you handle it? How do you handle it? And how do you go forward? So anyway, um, you know, the one thing I can say is that, um, persistence and resilience are the two things that keep you going and that don't allow you to give up. There's so many people who will quit when things get hard. And I'm going to tell you that when things get hard, um, we just work harder. Yeah. When things get hard. We work harder. We think different. We reach out. Yes. You know, yes. so, yes. Uh, and I am a believer in self-care. I, I really am. Um, it's been my lesson to learn to take care of myself. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that um, it hasn't always been my strength, but I'm still working on it. Um, but it is an example of how other people need to, to pay attention and take care of themselves as well. It's everything to me. Self-care is like the top of the tier because, or it's the bottom, it's the base for everything. And I, in fact, you know, people are like, oh, I don't have time, blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. You fit everything else around your self-care. So everything else gets fit around that 20 minutes of exercise or meditation or whatever it is that feeds you and nourishes your energy on multiple levels. That's what comes first. Because I know for me that if I don't start my day with yoga, meditation, on the bike, whatever it is that I'm feeling pulled toward that day, then I probably won't do it. I probably won't do it. But if I start it, it's done. And then I have more energy to move through the day. My body feels better. My mind feels better. And it's like, yay. And the rest of my day still has all the same amount of time as it would have. <laughs> but Good I job. Right? So self-care is the start, not what we fit in, but what we fit the rest of our life around so that mm -hmm. we can show up and serve not just in a business capacity. And that's what it's important right. for whoever is listening to hear is that we serve the people we love, our kids, our partners, our parents for a lot of us in the sandwich generation. And we serve the people we work for. Yes, we might even serve our neighbors if we're helping them. But if we're not taking care of ourselves, we're we're no good. We're not of service. Right. We're not able to serve, at least not to the quality that we desire to serve. So- Self-care is no joke. <laughs> You're absolutely right. And and when I think of you, that's the first thing that comes to mind is self-care first. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing I think of because you have been a true example of consistently, no matter what's going on <laughs> in your life, that that has been the, a, a really solid principle. And um, no one can argue with that. 
because it's 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 trite to say or it's you know cliche to say if you know how I need to fill my cup first Mm -hmm. but you actually do it so there's a difference it so hard because the results prove themselves right and three teenagers (laughs) are great motivation for continuing to up level that self-care because I would be no good to them Mm. if I wasn't taking care of myself and they need me to be at my best. You know, teenage years are hard and mine have lots of things going on. It's not, it's not, they're not skating through life, right? They're dealing with depression and anxiety and gender issues and uh, they're and divorce. And, you know, they're, they're dealing with a lot. And if I'm not on top of my game, how can I support them? I'd just be yelling at them. I'd just be perpetuating cycles. Instead, yeah. I'm creating new patterns of, and ways of behaving and demonstrating. I always tell my clients who are parents, I, I tend to end up with single parents as clients. As, you know, no surprise. Uh, but that parenting is show, not tell. And so is business. And so is relationship. It's all show, not tell. We can't just tell people to do things and then, you know, go eat, I don't know, Reese's peanut butter cups and... <laughs> Girl killer shows. <laughs> Sleep through that six a.m. I don't like Reese's peanut butter cups. <laughs> you, I but I do like me some good. I do like me some good, uh, good true crime uh, occasionally. Uh, you do occasionally, and I give I I set limits for myself because it's not what I want to be nurturing my brain with. <laughs> right? Not how to kill your spouse and be stupid about it because that's <laughs> the thing I think that's like what like it, it's almost I don't want to say comical because it's not but it's it's like to find the stupidity in or the unbelievableness if that's even a word um of how people treat one another and yes. didn't you once marry them and love them and have children with them and yeah so it's become a uh, fascination, I think, yeah. of human behavior for me. And Definitely. I'm a studier of human behavior and how do people react and how do people act. So that's the extreme side. It is. I know. <laughs> I watched Dahmer. I did it. <laughs> well, and then I yeah. thought, okay, I'm going to read really beautiful books for the next few months and only watch funny things or uplifting things like Queer Eye is my favorite quickie show because it's just so good on every level. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a total life makeover. I love that show. Uh, so anyway, we, we have to take care of ourselves and there are so many levels of self-care and business is one of them. Okay. We definitely have hit our time here. I think I could talk to you forever. I'm so happy that you came on today. I just love chatting with you and it's really Aww. fun to kind of get to know you again and just hang out. Yeah. With you. Good to catch up. Good to yeah, catch up. So good. Yeah. Anything, where do people find you? If if someone listening is like, I want to work with this woman. I, I want to learn how to sell with love. And I really like that. And I want that business boost book. Where, where do we find you? Where do you show up? Yeah. So you can go to Cheryl uh, My name is below. So you can see that and um, you can schedule a sales shift session with me. And we really just go over and um, diagnose what are the things that you need um, what is it that you're doing or not doing, or do you need a plan? Do you have a plan? And we just need to tweak it. Um, and it's, a, you know, it's a free call. I love helping people give them solutions to what they need to do. It's not about, um, you need to hire me. It's about what do you need to get to go where you need to go? So what is it that you want? Where are you? And, you know, what happens in between? So, uh, I love people. I love helping people. That's what's, um, I think brought me into this profession, uh, all along has been helping people get to where they want to go. So that's where they can find me. Love it. Thank you. I'll put it in the show notes. So it's an easy click for people listening or watching. Thank, Thank you, Cheryl. Thank Hello. you viewers, watchers. I appreciate your time and I'll talk to you again next week. Bye. Thank you for joining us on Spirit Cafe. Please leave all comments on our Spirit Cafe Facebook page or in the comments below our YouTube videos.